Alright, covers. Here are some covers. And the theme this time is they are perfect imperfections. Like that song says. You know, that song, the one that guns perfect imperfections. That is the only bit I remember of it, but it guns like this. It guns perfect imperfections. So here are five comic book covers. They would be good, but there is some it holding them back. First up is Spider-Man 47 by Lee Lyle. Conceptually, I think this is a strong cover, but there are two problems for me. Firstly, Spider-Man's anatomy and pose. The longer you look at it or study it, the more frustrating it becomes. His hips are ginormous and his feet are tiny by comparison and it can ruin what I think is a solid cover idea here. What bothers me even more though is this empty space here. There's just a great big piece of real estate where there is nothing. It is terrible considering all this copy you could quite easily move one or two of those to this otherwise blank space. Also, it is merely my legit diagnosed obsessive compulsive disorder, but Obgobla's odd being off center hurts me the most of everything on this cover. But I think if someone was to recreate this cover, they could quite easily improve on its faults. And it would be every bit the good cover that I think it can be. I didn't like shiny covers, so here is a shiny cover. This is Death Metal number 3 by Greg Batman. And this is here because I love this art. I think this is a great cover. Honestly, I love this image of Superman. It is nice and simple and effective. But they ruined it with this needless foil effect. I think the shininess actually ruins the whole image. Contrast is a huge part of this picture and Superman being contrasted with the colour of the background. That is very important. And all of that is lost with this gimmick. This could have been my favourite cover of 2020, but instead it is just a cover I love the artwork for, but ain't what we got. Speaking of gimmicks, in 1993, as part of the Fecal Attraction crossover, all the Excellent Men franchise books that tied into that event, they came with these stupid holographic cards glued onto the covers like this. This one is Mr. Magnets. I didn't like them, but I like them even less because they draw attention away from the actual cover, which in this case is a wraparound image by Junior Junior of like all the then excellent men characters, and I love it. Look, even the Flash is there in his short lived excellent men uniform. The other thing is these card things, they are also placed on top of it. And like in this case, they are obscuring or hiding parts of the art, like Rouge. I also reckon there's someone stood there. Let's have a look, see who's missing. There'll be a cut here, because I've just been silent for five minutes trying to think. Uh, cables, maybe. Cables isn't there. We do have Buffy Pride and the Smurf. So someone from Excalibur is possible. And then even this bit is covering up characters. We've got Multiplication Man down there and the Wolf Skull substitute. There's Dominoes. I doubt this is just Mike Tyson's arm. There's There's got to be like someone there. Squealy. I think Squealy is my guess. I cannot see him anywhere. And he definitely is in the issue. I remember this great scene with him and Mike Tyson. You can technically remove these, and I intend to do so after this video. So expect an edit here, or a tag at the end, where I show that I have removed it. 
I think what I have done well here is managed to find five covers with problems which are each uniquely different. Here is a great cover that was coloured wrong. This is Millennium number one and it is the first part of a crossover spinning out of Green Lanterns. So they decided to colour it all green. Have all the characters shaded green to reflect that. I get why they did it, but it was a terrible choice. We have this assemblage of colourful heroes and they have all been made the same shade of green rather than visually popping. Some good news is they did a trade paperback of this and for the cover for that they recoloured this so they were their true colours. But it is a shame that for the issue they went this route because I do bloody love these covers with a bunch of heroes all together. And finally, we have possibly the most offensive and most upsetting cover ever. This is 414 by Simon Walterson, which has some of the best artwork ever, one of the sexiest cover images ever, and all around one of the best covers ever. And the editor fucking ruined it by fucking placing the title in the middle, covering a good portion of the art. Why isn't the title just up there in the background and not intruding on the excellent artwork? You can go on Google and see this cover without the copy. I recommend it. It is beautiful. I have shown that image to a girlfriend before as a relationship goal. She dumped us a few weeks later. This could have been and should have been one of the finest covers to ever grace a comic. And instead, an incompetent boob ruined it. Those are five comic book covers that are not good, but they were nearly good. Which ones did you like or see the most in? Which did you think were dog shit regardless? How fucking annoying is this one? I mean, traditionally, every other issue of a comic ever has had the title up top in the background, not the fucking middle up front. I realised I didn't have to keep doing these with a theme, but I had three themes already picked out and this was one of them. Next, it is either Gregory Landsman or Connecting Covers. Vote down below which one you want us to do first. Five good Gregory Landsman comic book covers. And yes, they are all of sexy women. Or five good connecting comic book covers. And yes, they are all of sexy women. I rate these five covers just short of seven thumbs up. I don't know how easily this can be removed. I am possibly going to destroy this comic in the process. Let's get me good old knife out. Like you can't just peel it off is a thing. I just need to get behind it with a knife and then I can pry it off. You know what? I didn't care about the card. I can just like end up tearing that up as long as what's behind it's fine. Were I to take it off, it would just be white underneath. Just a second, let's try it again from another angle. Maybe I just got in badly. Oh, we've got a good... Yeah, it would just tear off anything underneath it. So removing it would be pointless. Yeah, there's absolutely no reason to remove this. So this is even more disappointing. Since I am a genius, I thought to look in the Fecal Attraction art cover and we've got some goodies here. Mr. Magnet, the art is actually really good and they ruined it with that holographic effect. It's actually by Greg Batman. And there we can see what it is covering most of Rouge. So in my opinion, just a cover that they absolutely ruined. 